don't know if I could see that way. Oh. All right, Father, we thank you for this time together. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that's already been moving in this place. Father, we bless you. We thank you for all that you're doing, Father, in the lives of every single person, Father, in this building and beyond. We thank you, Father, that you care for us and that, Lord, you see what's ahead of us and you can be trusted with what's ahead of us, Father. We bless you, Father, and we walk in faith according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So Sunday, we were talking about growing stronger. Yes. Growing stronger. And how can we grow stronger? I feel like y'all are just trying to get as far away from me as you can. <laughs> like all the way in the back, filling up the back. It's okay. It doesn't... <laughs> I won't let it get to me. I'm just saying. <laughs> I feel like you're way over there. Sorry, I got my knife right there. I didn't want to have it in my pocket while I was teaching. Whew. Praise God. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Growing stronger. We're going to start off with Job 17, verse 9. Job 17, verse 9. And this is in the King James. We're going to follow the King James this evening. There are a couple that we may look at in the Amplified, but for right now, I'd like to look in the King James. Job 17, verse 9 says this, Yet shall the righteous hold to their ways, and he who has clean hands shall grow stronger and stronger. Or in this case, be stronger and stronger. How many of you in here are righteous? You know why? Because of what Jesus did. You have been made righteous. You are now right standing with God. Amen. We have a purpose in this world. How many of you agree to that? We have a purpose. Is it to be here and work ourselves to death? No. How many of you feel like that sometimes? (laughs) God put man here, and he wanted us to rule and reign over this earth. When Adam and Eve were put in the garden, the, one of the very first things that he did was reach out to them and try to communicate with them. Because he knew, he already knew what had happened. He already knew that they took of that tree. But yet... He walked through saying, where are you? He knew where they were. He knew exactly where they were. Where are you? And why does he do that? Because he wanted them to recognize where they were and what they had done. All they felt was guilt and shame to hide themselves. Isn't that how we get sometimes when we sin or we do something that we just know was wrong we try to hide from God because sin separates us from God it separates that desire that we had for God and causes us to feel like we're isolated from God and that's not healthy that's not healthy for us I'm not trying to hide from you I'm trying to get right in the middle there In order for us to grow stronger, anything that we have in our lives that is separating us from God has to be dealt with. The light of the Holy Spirit has to reveal it. We need to acknowledge it. 1 John 1, 9, confess it as sin, and he's faithful and just to forgive us if we confess. When we are clean, everybody in here say, Lord, Lord, no matter what I've done, up to this point, up to this point I'm, forgiven. I'm forgiven. You are clean right now where you sit. You are clean. No matter what the words were that you said on the way here because someone pulled out in front of you in the drive over. I didn't do that, I promise. No matter what happened up to this point, it's gone. And when Jesus died on the cross, he didn't just die for your sins that you did. He died for the sins that you might be involved in right now, the sins that you might do in the future. That's how much he loved us. Why did he do that? 
because sin will paralyze us and separate us from God who strengthens us. Amen. He wants us to be strong. Let's read this again. The righteous, woohoo, that's everyone in here, shall hold his way. You will be on the path. You will hold yourself steady. And he that hath clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. That word clean means purity, unadulterated, uncontaminated. When we are uncontaminated with worldly things, we will get stronger and stronger spiritually, physically sometimes as well. Do you remember a point in your walk with the Lord, and you may even be there right now, where no matter where you go, all you know is God's presence, and you can see what's going on with people as you pass them by. You sense the Holy Spirit's move, and you know what God's doing, and it's like you're just in this not la-la land. I don't make it, you know, I don't want to make it sound so super spiritual that you're no earthly good, but, but you're in a moment, you're in a, you're in a frame of mind and a frame of spiritual mind and spirit that you're strong because you've made choices to separate yourself from the world. I remember when I first got saved, I was eight years old. Even then, I was just sitting in a pew. And I'll never forget it, as sure as I'm standing here. Pastor Bob, believe it or not, I had a Pastor Bob back then. Bobby Wheeler was up there preaching, and I say preaching, he had just preached, and he had his moment where he was letting everyone know, if you would like to come forth for prayer, if you'd like to give your heart to the Lord, come on up. Well, I had already, during the song they were playing, Miss Debbie on the piano, I'd already been sitting in the seat crying. I didn't know what was wrong with me. All I knew is that I needed Jesus. That's all I knew is I, I got to go up there. I got to go up there. That's all I know. And I'm shaking. I'm sitting in that, in that booth. I say booth, but the pew. And I'm shaking and I'm crying. And Mr. Kilgo, who was our deacon, his daughter was sitting right next to me. And that's the only name I don't remember. Blonde hair. She was like an angel. Short blonde hair, blue eyes. And she reached over and she tapped me on the leg and said, are you going to go up? Are you ready? I said, yes. And she grabbed my arm and she walked right up with me and they led me in the sinner's prayer and I got saved. Eight years old. From that moment throughout my life, I always was drawn to know more about God, more about religion, more about people. Now, I was a shy girl in school. I only had a couple of friends that I hung out with because they were friends that made me feel complete. They encouraged me. I didn't have time for the nonsense. I just simply didn't have time for the little clicks and the stuff, I just didn't. And so I was pretty much on my own, you know, with my, my friend Brenda and a couple others. But as I grew older, the Holy Spirit started like wooing me. I came here, I was living in Ohio, and one summer I came here to visit because during the summers I was coming to visit my grandparents while we were out of school. And my Aunt Jean, I stayed with her for a little while and she took me to her church. And the youth ministry over there was amazing. And the youth minister spent a lot of quality time just feeding me the word of God and encouraging me to study the word. And so when I went back home that year, I remember taking out my Bible that my mom gave me and I just started reading it. And out of the blue, don't know why, but people like Ernest Angeli and others were sending stuff to my house. I don't know if mom and dad were subscribing to their stuff or just arbitrarily just started coming or whether the youth leader I was with at the time, but these things started coming into the home and I started reading it and then I learned, wait a minute, there's a Holy Spirit, there's gifts, there's all these things, there's healing. And so as I started studying those things and just really kind of absorbing it, I didn't really put it into practice. I was just learning about it. And then I, I graduated from Somerville High School. Long story short, is that too late? Long story short, after I graduated from high school, I moved out on my own and I began to attend a church in Mount Pleasant 
which was Living Fountain Ministry, where Pastor Charles and Jan Grooms were pastors. They had started their ministry there because they were co-pastors with Pastor Jan and, or with uh, Pastor Bob and Susan. They started a ministry together. And at some point they started theirs in Mount Pleasant and Pastor Bob continued his here. So as I started going to that church, I learned more about the Holy Spirit. I learned more about gifts of the Spirit and callings and anointings. And so whereas in my youth, I was learning more about the word and reading, I was also learning more about religion because I was in a, I went to the uh, catechism classes and I learned a lot about the Catholic faith. I was in a Baptist church. I had been to a Methodist church, a Lutheran church. A, I mean, I'd been to all these places and started learning more about different people and what they believed, which helped me to be more rounded in what I believed. So as life goes on, here I am at the Shield of Faith Church and um, Pastor Charles and Jan moved to Florida. And so I was able to meet the other half of the dynamic couples that started the ministry. Now, growing stronger from that age, from a young age of eight, continuing to grow. And I don't know that anyone really in their mind who were around me knew that they were helping me to grow. But every person in my life was a very intricate point, a very intricate person to help me be where I am today. Without that encouragement, I, I would not even know half of what I know. I would not know how to move in the spirit or even be led by God or even know God's voice. I want to encourage you for with what I have been given, just like Paul, I want to impart to you something that will help you in your walk with God. Never stop growing. Amen. Never stop leaning in closer to God to, to learn more and allow him to do the work on the inside of you. It is worth it. It is worth it all. Amen. Don't be weary in well-doing. Never give up. Continue that walk of separating Ourselves. We need to continue that walk of separating ourselves from the world. Does that mean I'm just going to hide in a closet somewhere? Just me and you, God. Don't bother me. I am in my zone. No, it's not about separating ourselves that way, but not allowing ourselves to be attached to things that won't let go of us later. Amen? So... I'm going to read this, Romans 12, 1 through 2, and then we're going to go a little bit farther down here. As I stated on Sunday, I wanted to go through the latter part of my teaching, but I'm just kind of wetting your whistle on some things we've already talked about. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you. Say beseech. beseech. I beseech you. Sounds like a strong German word, doesn't it? I beseech you, therefore, brethren. By the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Next verse, two. And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We want to know what God's will is. We might sit in front of the TV and we're like, oh, they're talking about gifts, what's my gift? Oh, they're talking about callings and anointings, what's mine? Oh, wow, that person's so called, but what am, what is, what am I to do? Who am I? Every person, you are strategically put on this entire planet Addison, will you come here, honey? You are put on this planet in the very spot you're in for such a time as this. You could have been born 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, but you were born in the year that you were born on purpose. Can you do the best you can to draw an earth for me? Okay. Addison has agreed to help me this evening, and I'm very excited about that. 
And we have a few scriptures she's going to help read as well. Oops. So when you're done drawing that, if you'll just have a seat in the chair. Now, if you guys remember what Mr. Willie was sharing on Sunday about our stratosphere and how the enemy wants to come in and bombard us and break a, a hole in our protection in some way, shape, or form. So here you are walking through Walmart, you're all happy, all things are great, and all of a sudden, sudden someone just cuts you that eye because you're in the way. And it hits you to the core because you don't like attitude. And now you're like, then an hour goes by and you're not feeling right. Another two, three hours go by and you're like, why don't I feel right? And you forget that what started it was this dart that came in that affected your world, your spirit. Today I was on the phone with the IRS and was trying to help a friend of mine rectify a situation they were going through and they were struggling with trying to get a copy of their bylaws. I'm on the phone with this, with this woman, she's really nice to start with, and then she started to explain to me what she thought I was asking. She was, in her own way, trying to explain, and I was like, no, that's not exactly what I, well, I'm going to finish saying what I was saying. Now, I could have went, la, 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 la. I didn't. I said, okay, I said, Lord, what to do, what to say, because I didn't want her wasting her time any more than I wanted mine. Wasted. So let her talk. And then she's like, and then what you need to do is call this number, 877. She said it so fast I couldn't even write it down. I said, ma'am, 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 ma'am. Wait a minute. This is really what I what I need is this right here. Well, you just need to call that number. And I and she just hung up. And I'm like, what number? I can't even get the number down. I've been on hold for how long to get this? Three phone calls to the IRS to get what I needed because they are so overwhelmed right now. If you haven't heard, they're, they're short-staffed, they're overwhelmed. And if I, as a Christian, cannot bring life, even in those situations, we are to encourage others, no matter what they're going through. We can take it personal. She doesn't know me. I don't know her. But we have to separate, what does that Pastor Bob and Susan say? Separate the person from their actions and reactions. Because Jesus died for that person and that person is special. How can we help other people grow stronger? That person that we might have an issue with at work or at home or family, whatever. How do we help them to become stronger? And that's what we're going to talk about today. All right, let's look at Isaiah 35. One of the things we, uh, or a couple of things we did in the progression of Sunday, if you um, weren't here on Sunday, you get the CD and you can listen to some of the first half of this teach. Thanks to Jesus, give things that he has done for us, which we have done beautifully during worship as well. One another to one another. And we read that in Ephesians 4, verses 20. We talked about forgiving others. We do against us, we forgive them. Amen? We talked about King David. King David, whenever he and his men came into Ziglag, their wives were gone. And then his men started coming against him. Like they left them, left their families vulnerable, so they were blaming David. And what he did is he, in the verse 6, said that David was greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him. He was for dead. But the soul of the people were. David encouraged himself in the Lord. That word encouraged means to fasten upon. Who do you? Jesus, God. He was grabbing a hold of this in bravery. Our words are extremely important. But that's not the only way that we encourage folks, not just our words, the word of God and worship. That song is just worship the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Just worship yes. the Lord, yes. worship the Lord. And there are times, even today, when I left work, I had to go through like a detail. Lord, that day will be there when I get there tomorrow. I am not a worrywart. 
what I need to do. My responsibilities at home are at home. When I'm at work, it's at work. So it's not coming home with me. Amen? Amen. Let's look at Isaiah 35. This chapter is talking about the future glory of Zion. Remember I talked on Sunday about, hey, we have a future. We are aiming towards our life that we're going to be spending in heaven, ruling and reigning with him. Amen? Amen. And the coming of the Lord is so beautifully laid out in this, ver in this chapter. It's amazing. And we're going to go through this. There's only 10 verses. And if you don't mind as we go through it, Mike, if we'll just go from verse to verse as I read through. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. And the desert shall re rejoice. Now, when you read something like this, you might just read it and say, oh, the desert, the desert, a dry and barren place is rejoicing. Well, in the spirit realm, that desert is symbolic of those who are not saved. They have no water. They have no refreshing. They have not received Jesus. So as we read this, the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Uh-oh, how's that going to happen? Verse 2. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Okay. Verse 3. So the desert's going to be a happy place, right? But there's more to it. There's more to it. Verse 3. I know it's hard on those double screens. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Time out. So it's talking about one, verse 1 and verse 2 that the desert is going to become a fruitful place, a happy place, a joyful place. But in verse 4, I mean verse 3, it's talking about you or the, you strengthen those parts of you. Verse 3, strengthen. Well, wait a minute. Are we relying on somebody else to do that? No, it says strengthen you the weak hands. Okay, our hands, remember it talked about our clean hands and being uncontaminated with the world? Well, the way we strengthen our hands is we separate ourselves from worldly things. Strengthen your weak hands. So first of all, we can have strength in the spirit realm. When we're laying hands on the sick, when we're laying hands on the sick, if my hands in the spirit realm are uncontaminated with the world, there's a clean flow when I pray for someone. Now I'm strengthened and because I have allowed myself to be separated from those things that taint, now I can impart into this beautiful young lady God's power and God's strength because I've strengthened the weak hands. Come over here for a second. I'm going to have you read the next couple of scriptures and confirm the feeble knees. I don't know what we do with our knees. Does anybody know what we do with our knees? Bow on our knees, pray on our knees, walk with our knees, run with our knees. If we didn't have knees, what would we be able to do? Not a whole lot. Confirm the feeble knees. Now, that is in verse Three. So let's see. Confirm means to be alert. Physically and mentally. To be courageous. Steadfastly minded. Strong. Fortify. Amen. So this is what we are to do. Strengthen our hands. We become uncontaminated with the world. We stop doing things the world's way, but trust God, and we confirm, meaning to be alert. We become more alert in the way we walk. We become more alert, in physically and mentally, in where we're going. 
When we walk, we're walking courageously. That's what those root words mean to the word confirm. It's a whole new way of life. So we want to be strengthened? Amen. Right there, verse 3. Amen? And you'll also find that same scripture in Hebrews 12, 12, believe it or not. So I'm going to tell you, this, this verse right here, I'm just going to read it to you. Based on the root words, this is what this verse means. Repair and strengthen and establish your slothful, lazy hands and be courageous and alert physically and mentally by blessing, praising, and thanking God. What? Based on the root words of all those words up there, that's what it means. It's a word of encouragement to us so that we can be strengthened. Amen? Amen. Verse 4. We're going to put verse 4 up here, and we're going to let Addison read. Come on up here, honey. And I've just turned on the other mic. I think this is number one. You're the top of the number one girl. So if you can look right up there and hold it close enough where it can go onto the CD as well. There you go. Go ahead. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vague vengeance. Vengeance. Vengeance, even God with a re recompense. Recompense. Mm -hmm. He Sorry, you will one. come and save you. Amen. So listen, that desert that they talked about in the very first part, you can hold this. We're going to turn it off for a second. But when I call you back up, then you can turn it back on and we'll let you do the next one. The desert that was dry, that needed joy. But then, wait a minute, we have a part in them being changed. So now that we've been changed, we can say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong. Who's afraid? Who's afraid of the big man? No, who's afraid? We can encourage them and say, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. He's not just going to sit around and watch what's going on with you. He's going to come with a vengeance and take care of whatever's messing with you. That's why it is important for us to say, God, have mercy on these people who come against us because they have no idea what force of God they're coming up against. Just as Jesus hung on the cross and died to his flesh and said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. We have to crucify our desire to take somebody out and say, Lord, forgive them because they don't know what they do because that vengeance is coming down on them if we don't stand in the gap. The way it's left, and I did. As soon as I got off the phone with that lady, I said, Lord, please forgive me. If my heart was wrong in this conversation, forgive her for, I mean, I covered it all, covered it all and said, bless her, Lord. Bless, we do not curse. Amen? Amen. He will come and save you. All right. Who wants revival? When we start thanking God and actually choosing to give him thanks in every chance, that's when we're going to see revival. Yes. We create the atmosphere. Right. Right. This right here. Amen. Go back. You can go back to verse 5. It's okay. We're going to let Addison come on up and read verse 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the fear the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Stand right here. Then when If you see the word then at the beginning of a verse, you go back and read the verse before it. When, verse 4, when we say to them, be courageous. 
when, we can go back to verse 3, and even go farther, when all of these things happen, when we are encouraging others, when we are allowing God to use us to encourage others, that's when verse 5 is going to happen. We're like, Lord, why? Why when I lay hands on somebody they can't see? When I lay hands on their ears for hearing, they can't hear. Why are we not seeing the healing power of God? Cleansing our hands and strengthening our feeble knees and telling folks, encouraging folks, be strong, be courageous. When Adam and Eve were in the garden, who made their covering? God. Yeah. They didn't go out and kill a badger and cover themselves. God did. God did. Instead of us relying on God's strength, let's let him be our strength. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Just let him do it. Let's look at verse 6. I wonder what else is going to happen. You want to tell me what else is going to happen when we, we continue to allow God to do that work inside of us? What else is going to happen, young lady? We're going to look at verse 6 and find out. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. Oh. All right. Whoa, check that out. Is that not awesome? That's when we're going to see the revival and the waters of the Holy Spirit flowing out of us. And, and all it is is when we make a choice. It's a choice. One choice, one time. Lord, it's not every day. Lord, help me every day. What choice am I? No, I, no. Lord, for the rest of my life, I'm listening to you. You tell me what I need to do. And whatever you say, I'm doing it. Now, sure, we're going to make mistakes, folks. Don't get me wrong. We're not perfect. But it's not like, well, I, I, I don't know what to do. I mean, I see this and I see this. And I know this is what God wants me to do, but I really want to do There is no choice. I am doing it God's way. <laughs> Amen? I'm going to do it God's way. So let's get some waters breaking out. Say break out. Break out. Break out. Break out. Break out. Amen. And streams in this desert. Oh, but we're not done. We got verse 7. What's verse 7 got for us, young lady? And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water, and that habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with re reeds and rushes. Amen. You never thought dragons was in there, did you? Ooh, there's a lot of stuff in there you may not know. Oh, well, that root word means it's a lizard, right? Selah. Thirsty land will be springs of water. Have you guys ever been to Wanamaker Park and you see all that water coming up out of the ground? How about downtown at Waterfront Park? Coming up out of the ground. How would, would, it would just, how amazing to see a person who's lost, woo, springing forth, just totally different, on fire for God, excited about that life that's coming to their land, amen? Amen. Mm. Verse 8. And, and, and. Mm -hmm. Highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Mm -hmm. The unclean shall not pass over, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men through fools shall not err The therein. fools shall not err therein. A highway shall be there. What? Yes. And a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Hmm. And I like this one. Let's do verse 9. 
And then you can have a seat. Verse 9. How then wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants and put thy trust on Egypt for chariots and Wait a horsemen. minute, we're in the wrong chapter. I was going to say, wait a minute. I didn't see nothing about no lion in that. <laughs> I was waiting for the lion. No lion? Chapter 35, verse 9. Sorry, guys. 35, verse 9. Yeah, that accidentally skipped over to 36. No worries. That was a great verse, by the way. <laughs> Good job on the read, ma'am. Good job on the read. Now we can sit here and try to figure out how that ties in with what we just read. <laughs> that was a little confusing. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Did you see me jet my head back down? Like, what? Okay, now we got the lion thing. No lion shall be Woo! there, nor any ravenous, ravenous. ravenous beast shall go up there thereon it shall not be found there but walk thou but the, walk the but the redeemed redeemed yeah. shall walk there yay good job thank you addison but the redeemed shall walk there there will be no lion no ravenous beasts nothing to be up in there messing with us now, verse 10. Now, you can see through these verses, God taking a sinner and bringing them through that healing and encouraging them to strengthen their hands, strengthen your knees, tell yourself and other people, be strong, be courageous. Then people are going to be getting healed as we reach out and the waters are flowing and the ransomed of the Lord shall return. And come into Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Bye-bye. This is why encouragement is so important. I said that like Joseph Smith would say it, my Joey important he enunciates every letter in word he is just came out of the womb speaking properly about everything i'm like if i could ever speak as well as you joe he just laughs water flowing from the temple in ezekiel verse 30 uh, 47 or cha we're going to encourage you ezekiel chapter 47 ezekiel 47 This is the Jordan River. Got it? Yes, sir. This is the Dead Sea. Verse 1. Thank you, hon. Uh, what is this up here? Is that the Sea of Galilee? Hold on a minute. Let me double check on my notes. This is where I would need my glasses. All right, we're gonna um, look at verse one to start with. And this chapter verifies and encourages us in the same way that Isaiah 35 did. We have the Dead Sea at the bottom. I believe this is a Sea of Galilee. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you. Is it two E's? I don't know. Afterward, he brought me again into the door of the house, and behold, waters issued from under the threshold of the house eastward for the forefront of the house stood toward the east and the waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar this is a chapter that i've gone through with you guys before some of you may remember it i'm not going to labor on this but i did want you to see this is talking about the temple the house the temple and how the water 
The Holy Spirit flows from the temple. Where is it flowing from? The threshold. The threshold of a door is the bottom part of the door. Your walk. The waters will flow from your walk. Which way is the temple faced? Facing? Eastward. If it's flowing from it, it's facing eastward. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Verse 2. Verse 2. He brought me out by the way of the gates northward and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looked eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And it continues on to talk about these waters as we go through these verses. Verse 3. And we're going to keep going on down to verse 5. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits. And he brought me through the waters where the waters were up to the ankles. Verse 4. Again, he measured, brought me through the waters. The waters were up to the knees. knees. Again, he measured a thousand and he brought me through the waters. We're up to the loins, verse 5. Here we're walking in a little deeper, walking in a little deeper. Afterwards, he measured a thousand and it was a river. I could not pass over it. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in, and a river that could not be passed over. Verse 6. Could not be passed. Now, when you're in a river, your feet aren't touching the, the, the ground. You're all flow. You're going with wherever the Spirit of God's taking you, amen? amen? And he said unto me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Ah, let's look at the river in verse 7. What does he see? Now, when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were many trees on one side and the other. Are we trees of righteousness? taking in the water of the Holy Spirit. That's why they're there. They're absorbing what water they can. Then he said he unto me, these waters issued out towards the east country. They go down into the des desert and they go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the water shall be healed. Hold on right there. The waters that they're referring to go down into the desert. This is a desert area. Okay? Brought forth into the sea. They're talking about the Dead Sea. Just keep that in mind. Let's keep going. Verse 9. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. And there shall be a great multitude of... All right, fishers of men, because these waters shall come thither. thither. I just wanted to hear you say it because I tried, you know. For they shall be healed. Huh? All right. And everything shall live wherever the river cometh. Verse 10. What? Everything. I get so excited. And it shall come to pass that even the fishers shall stand upon it from En Gedi even unto En and Eglim, and they shall be a place to spread forth nets, and their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea, exceeding many. Let me tell you this. The sea, Mediterranean Sea, the Mediterranean Sea has more kinds of fish than any other body of water in the planet. Isn't it a wonder that that's where Paul spent most of his ministry? Crossing as a fisher of men around the very body of water that had more kinds of fish than any other body of water in the planet. This scripture is talking about the water flowing. The water, the fresh water. How much of you, you know there's nothing alive in the Dead Sea. That's why they call it the Dead Sea. They also call it the Lake of Fire. Take that one and read your Bible a couple of times. <laughs> the fresh water, the scripture talks about the fresh water coming down 
and entering the Dead Sea and changing it into life water. Life water where anything can live in it. Now, right now in the natural, the waters that flow from the sea down the Jordan River into the Dead Sea, it doesn't change the Dead Sea. It doesn't change a thing about it. The opening of that sea, there's a little brine shrimp. They're all blind and, you know, white and, you know, just kind of eh. There's nothing alive in the rest of the water. But that scripture says, now let me ask you this. What is the lowest ground level place in this planet? The lowest of low. The bottom of the Dead Sea. When we don't have Jesus, guess where we are? But that fresh water, that fresh water, alive water coming through the body of Christ, the temple that's facing towards Christ, allowing his Holy Spirit to flow through us to not just carry us to ankle deep where we're walking, carry us to those knees that we need to be encouraged with and encourage others. How do we do that? On our knees, in prayer, in our faces, encouraging one another. Hey, I like banana pudding. I like your lemon cake. Let's not bring me food right now, though, because I'm doing something a little different with that whole diet thing. Then we go farther, and it's up to our loins. This is where reproduction begins. You go a little farther, and guess what? You have zero control over where you're going. Zero control. It is all about where God takes us. Amen? Amen. Be encouraged. Know that your life matters and one word you speak to someone could take them from wanting to commit suicide that day to thinking that they've got something God loves. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's seek it. Look for people. Allow God to use us to encourage one another in whatever way he chooses. Amen? Amen? Amen. Because I'm telling you, no matter where you go in this Bible... There's a couple of things you're going to find. Life. Relationship with Jesus. And we're going to be deliberate about finding a way to encourage people so that that life can flow through us. Whether it's calling someone on the phone and praying for them, saying, hey, you want to go for a walk? Let's chat. Studying the Bible together. Whatever it is, let God use us to be deliberate about our actions and encouraging one another. Amen? Amen. And I will leave you with this scripture in Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts. Well, we're gonna, yeah, let's go ahead and put that one up there if you guys don't mind. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. What is that expected end? The glory. We are on a mission. We are on a mission to change the world. But how do we do it? By encouraging strengthening not only ourselves, but each other. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's do it. Now, remember that song I played on Sunday? The oldie but a goodie? Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Even if somebody else isn't encouraging you, you encourage yourself in the Lord. Take that time and allow him to move on the inside of you to change the way you're feeling, the what's going on. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this word. Father, we thank you that in your word is life and that you have a plan and you want it to be fun for us. You don't want us to just be sitting around going through all these trials and not learning anything from it, but just mulling around. You want us to embrace it, to learn from these things and to grow so that our lives can be an encouragement to other people around us. Thank you, Father, for the work that you're doing on the inside of us, Father. We thank you for it, Father. 
Because without those things that you're doing on the inside of us, whew, God knows we might end up prideful or thinking we're better than someone else or we're holier or we're more healed or more this. Or, Lord, help us to stay humble. I would rather enter into the kingdom of God as lame as they come than to enter hell as prideful as they come. Thank you, Father, for what you're teaching us in this world, Father. And we thank you for all the things and for just being who you are to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Be encouraged, folks. If you need prayer, come on up here and let's pray for you. Um, woo! Yeah! Willie.